So let's do a, another one. Um, let's think of an appropriate event. Okay. Clearly, this is a contrived example. Like, I would never really dance in public. Okay, so here, this is just an event, a method. Yes. So you have dance as the method name. And oh. Dance, that's okay to do? No, that's not okay to do. Okay. Thank you for saving my life. Yeah, you're welcome. What I do. That's <laughs> what I do for a living. Yeah. Save people's lives. Okay, so now into our components. I almost feel like I'm at a concert, and at this point, like we're to like the hit song, and everybody could just jump in and sing with me. Like, that uh, it's almost... It's almost, I feel like we're, we're going through like a top 40 song from like the 80s. And it, just everybody knows the lyrics. So I want to dance. Yeah, that would be more appropriate. Dance me. Okay. And we're going to go output. Dancer. So we're creating a new event emitter. And what I'm going to do here instead of doing this, You can also emit this event right from the HTML. So you would want to do it like this if you actually need to perform some logic before actually emitting that event. So for instance, saying like, hey, this thing happened, but I don't want to actually do it, or I need to do some small transformation before I send it out the door. You can do it that way. And or if it's a really simple, just a pass through, um, sometimes I will just bypass this entirely to where I have a component that is just inputs and outputs, and there's nothing else in the class. Did I break something? Hold on. Dancer, output. So in in that one, isn't it called dancing or something like that? Does that have to be the same? Um, you don't have a component with that on there. That's right. Also, if if the uh, property level decorators just looks weird to anybody for the inputs and outputs, you can also use. You can also define your inputs and outputs on the component uh, decorator, too. So right where you put your selector and your template, you can put input and output, and they both take arrays with streams of the inputs and outputs that you want. That's an alternative syntax. But I believe the decorators, the property decorators, are the preferred method. So that's why it did not work, is because I forgot to go back to my parent component and wire this up. So now, when Dancer dot emit fires. It's going to fire this event here, and we're going to set this. Now, what I also need to do. I did like half a demo here, and like I thought it was ready to go. Also, believe the the emit method on the event emitter is deprecated now, and then you can add both. Did that just happen like oh, three days ago? It was recent. Yeah. Oh my.
It's only appropriate. And there we go. So any questions on events? You just admit it from the child component, pick it up, put it in the parent component. Are we good in chats? Uh, did you cover, they're asking, can you emit an object or an array? You can emit anything. So, for example, you just see this here. <laughs> so we have an items list, and this is in our sample app. So when something is selected, select item. And then in the handler, it's actually getting the item object. And so it can be a, you know, pretty much any value. Whatever you pass up, that's what your dollar event is going to be. Next question. Are we good? Um, I don't know if you want to cover this later or not, but they're kind of curious on a discussion when Angular 2 makes sense versus React from a technology standpoint, but maybe you want to cover that towards the end. That might be, so I will answer this. This is a much larger discussion than I think the 30 seconds that I'm going to give it. Um, I think React is an excellent, excellent framework. I think a lot of how they approach state management and even component-driven design has really affected how Angular 2 comes together. Six months ago, I would have probably said, if you're doing something totally greenfield, then React is a really strong cont contender. Now that we are in beta and going very quickly to um, basically a, a 1.0 release for Angular 2, it gets a little bit more nuanced. I think that according to Brad Green, Angular 2 is really ready for production, other than they're making a few additional changes to what is available to the API and working on optimizing the payload. With that said, for me, one of the reasons why I like Angular 2 so much, and I would, would generally, at this point, choose Angular 2 over React, is because of the true reactive mechanisms baked into the framework, which we will see tomorrow. I think that's really, really core, or it's just key for building out like large scale applications that when you have observables baked into it, that you can take the kind of React patterns, especially Redux, and apply it into Angular. Now you can have, you have this parity, but then you add in the new change detection, which you know, for a lot of benchmarks is as fast, if not faster, than React. And with the kind of reactive things, observables being the big one, baked into HTTP and forms, that to me is just huge. So, I mean, it's really a toss up. I would be, I would have to know more to say yes or no, on which one to choose. I think they're both great frameworks, but one, because I already understand Angular, that's probably where I'm going to stay, but really I think it comes down to personal preference and I happen to really like reactive things, like truly reactive things such as observables. Scott, if you would like to give a two minute answer to that, I think this is interesting and a valuable side discussion. Yeah, so I use React all the time, I'm using it for over a year now, and Angular. Um, I would say the reason I would choose Angular 2 for React right now would be, I think of React as more of a, a library than a framework actually. It's really just a, a view library and you still have to uh, be diligent and resourceful and figure out the other pieces as far as like, uh, you know, what are you going to use for your HTTP client, uh, state management, uh, you know, all this other, all these other things you have to figure out. Some people still use jQuery with, with React. There's just a lot of things you have to add to it, which is fine if you're resourceful and you're on the bleeding edge of JavaScript. But for most people, especially in, in, uh, in companies, they don't really want to do that. They really need a complete solution. So Angular 1 was that complete solution, but it turns out it just wasn't as effective uh, and, and complete, uh, and React showed its weaknesses. So Angular 2 keeps that same approach where it's like, all right, we're gonna be the complete package that we, we were in Angular 1, but now we're coming back, we're using standard technologies like uh, templates, Shadow DOM, we're gonna be built with TypeScript, so tooling and documentation is better. Um, and we're also gonna improve and learn what React did and apply some of that, the methodologies and some of the stuff that people are doing with unidirectional data flow and whatnot. So they kept the same stuff, 
they learned from React, they, and they cooperated with them. They did that stuff, um, and it's still the, the complete piece. So if you need, if you just wanted to start building what I happen to download and, and research a thousand different uh, libraries, then I would choose Angular too.